important, uh, especially as you contemplate public markets and so on. So a lot of it will be public market related. So I'll sp speak about three things. Why, why should it be important? You know, why is why, to, why why is this a priority? And I'll briefly speak about our experience at corporate governance at Infosys. We have now been in business for uh, you know 40 odd years. And of course, what does it mean for the startup system? Now we know very clearly that public markets have shown that corporate governance is critical. Uh, if you look at the S&P 500, you will find that the companies that are tops in corporate governance also outperform in, in, in the stock market. Those who have a crisis underperform and there is approximately about $250 billion value lost because of corporate crises in companies, uh, in these companies. So governance is the primary non-financial factor that affects financial performance. So it's very, very important for companies around the world. And you know, we have seen all these huge uh, fiascos. We saw Enron blow up 20 years back. Then we saw because of that Anderson Consulting blew up. We had WorldCom, which was, you know, fudging its numbers. They blew up. Lehman Brothers, one day in the middle of the financial crisis, got shut down. In India, we have had many cases. Two prominent ones are Satyam, which was a blot on the IT industry and had to be rescued by Mahindra. And then, of course, ILFS, which was another disaster, which again, thanks to Uday Kotak and all, they managed to bring it back. But fundamentally, we have seen huge scandals uh, in, in the last 20 years, both in India and in the US. I have not yet come to the private, uh, the capital, private market scandals. I am just talking about the public market scandals. And the need for responsible governance is growing. There is a massive demand for uh, governance. In fact, if you look at many of the CEOs who have lost their jobs in public markets, it's not really often due to financial performance. It's com something completely different, something to do with their governance, the behavior, and so on. And therefore, governance has become much, much more important in the analysis of, of companies. Now, there are multiple parts to a government, especially in a public company. You know, what is the role of the board? What is the role of the CEO, CXO, individuals, committees? So there are a lot of things, a lot of infrastructure you have to put in to make sure that you, you take care of all these things. And it's ultimately about having a long-term vision to maximize shareholder value, ensuring that there's no knowledge asymmetry. You know, the one, one of the big things in public markets is to make sure that what you know or what you tell investors is the same to every investor. You know, you, for example, if you're a SEC listed company, you have regulation FD, fair disclosure, which requires that you keep the knowledge asymmetry of what you tell everybody. So having that it's important, you know, all the problems of insider trading happen because of people sharing information that is not in the public domain. And obviously building a culture and value system. Today's governance also goes beyond governance in the sense of how you run your company. It also involves environmental issues. Sustainability is a big issue for companies. Uh, your social role, your social conscience is a big issue. So it goes beyond and that's why we call it an ESG environment, social, and governance. And all these three matter for companies. Now, at Infosys, governance was by design. It was not uh, an afterthought. It was part of the founding principles. And uh, these are, of course, some of our campuses. And basically, we have a purpose defined to amplify human potential and create the next opportunity for people, businesses, and community, which is the, the CSG part of it. ESG part of it. And this is really something which permeates everything we do. Uh, for example, in, in the case of our environment, I don't know whether many of you are aware, but we are a world leader in environment. We were carbon neutral in 2020, 30 years before Paris, and massive work on efficiency of energy and so on. We are, have our own 60 megawatt solar plant, so we generate huge amount of solar power. We have very, very efficient buildings, and you know, we have 29, 39 lakes across all our various campuses. Every one of our campuses is biodiversity and so on. It's plastic free, zero waste, full recycling, full rainwater harvesting and so on. And we have, we have built among the most uh, advanced buildings in the world. They're all net zero buildings. We have about 50 million square feet of office space across the world. And all these buildings are extremely 
low consumption in energy, in water, in lighting and so on and so forth. The one, so one part of this is really the environmental sustainability, whether it's energy, water or biodiversity. And then of course there's a whole bit on social activities through our foundations and we do a huge amount of work around the world. And this has of course many things that we talk about. And, but it's really, this is happening through our core values. Now, you guys will think, okay, you are talking about all this governance, shavanas, what about business performance? So just to clarify that business performance is also there. I mean, if you had invested 10,000 rupees when we went IPO in 1993, it would be worth 20 crores. So it's not a bad ROI. It's probably among the highest in Indian capital markets. Our current market cap is $72 billion. Our share price has moved up 212% in the last five, six years and we have zero debt and therefore when you have zero debt you know and you know and you have two and a half crores of free cash flow every year or more you know you can be like comfortable there's no pressure there's nobody you know at the door worrying about things because you have free cash flow and zero debt so financial performance has not is is goes with this it's not just that we all worried about esg and not worried about business performance so we have business performance combined with commitment to these esg goals Now, how, what were the framework of beliefs that uh, that was pervasive? One was putting public good ahead of private good, making sure that we all uh, put our in public interest higher than individual interest, uh, we, sound value system, separating personal from corporate, so we never spend money of the big company on our personal stuff. Very clear rules and of course leadership by example. And this has been over years backed by a very strong independent board, a uh, very strong alignment of executive compensation with shareholder interest. You can, you're welcome to see our filings and what is the way we compensate our CEOs. It's entirely, you know, driven by TSR and alignment of interests. Uh, we have, you know, and we have been pioneers in implementing corporate governance practices before they were mandatory. So, for example, we were the first to have an audit committee even before the act mandated it. We have had fair, fair disclosure policies for the last 25 years, CSR and so on. So basically, made sure that on every dimension we are ahead. And this is something that is not a recent phenomenon. This is since we were set up in 1981. So since 1981, we have been practicing these corporate governance philosophies. And this has of course led to many, many things that have put us on a global scale. We were the first Indian company to list in the US, which meant we are the first Indian company to follow ACC gap standards dual gap, nobody had done it before, making sure that your accounting standards were both Indian gap and US gap. We're the first to publish quarterly audited results, first to do, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it's really on voluntary, we first to implement ESOPs in India. You talked about ESOP management. We implement ESOPs in 1992, which is a long time back. So basically on every dimension, we have said that if you want to be a corporate governance leader, you have to lead by example and do these things because we think if you do that, two things happen. One is that it, you become a role model and other people then hopefully aspire to follow the same standards of corporate governance. And then of course, in a public market, shareholders can ask companies, if these guys can do it, why don't you? And therefore, it also acts as a way to get better behavior among companies. Now, this is of course the business performance, uh, you know, we've gone up from uh, about 8.9 billion to about 18.2 billion dollars in revenue, 21 percent operating margin, 2.5 billion dollars of free cash flow, and a market cap of 72 billion. So it's been a story of business along with uh, all these things. Now, why did it all work? It worked because the founders were very cohesive. The founders had a very strong belief. We had a good leader, strong leader in Mr. Murthy. We had a shared sense of purpose to create a globally respected company. We had shared value systems. We had shared agreement on key strategic issues. What did we want to do in business? And we had a shared approach to what we can call as delayed gratification, which means willing to postpone benefits for tomorrow, not saying, oh, right now I want to go and buy that Ferrari or whatever. So fundamentally, this kind of cohesion is very important. And I think one of the big challenges I see today is I don't, I often see the founder cohesion could be better because people have different values, people have different time frames, some people are willing to bet for the long haul, some people want to see gains tomorrow morning and so on and so forth. So having shared values, 
shared purpose, shared time frame, shared sense of purpose is extremely important for companies. And I think that's something which uh, we all have to look at because I'm assuming that founders want to build companies to last. That is not just like a one trick pony or a short thing. It's about building something that they take public. As I said, it takes 12 to 14 years to go public. So these are marathon running games. And for that, you need to have a very shared sense of everything you do. So founder cohesion is a very important part for long term success. Now, we have done this, as I said, even while setting new benchmarks. Now, you are in a much more different world because our world was not as fast as your world is, right? I mean, we were founded in 1981. We went public only in 1993. So it took us 12 years to go public. Uh, we, we were in an era when, uh, you know, India was not economically liberalized, so extremely difficult to do business. But you also had a luxury of time in some sense. You could take more time to get things done. But today it's about very, very fast moment. Every day there's a new technology, a new innovation, a new, your modes are getting destroyed and so on. So it's a very, very competitive world. And therefore, it's all the more important that you have strong corporate governance to attract investments, to gain the trust of your shareholders, and to, and to get really good growth. Now, we have obviously seen a huge transformation. In, 19, in 2016, India had only 1,000 startups. Today, we have 100,000 startups. So there's a dramatic explosion of startups, entrepreneur energy and capital and, and all this stuff. And of course, also great job creation. But there have been challenges. You know, we are seeing, you know, patchy risk controls. Uh, often there's no succession planning. Suddenly the founder leaves and then you don't know what to do next. Uh, so value systems, you know, not exactly everywhere of the top notch variety. There's no disclosure. Part of the challenge is in private markets, you don't have the discipline of public markets. If in a public market, you are not only bound by uh, requirements under the Stock Exchange Listing Act or under the SEBI or in our case, both SEBI and SEC rules, you have to disclose a lot of stuff in your filings. And therefore, disclosure is mandated in public markets. And also public markets are liquid. So if a particular investor is not happy with your performance or has doubts about governance, you can just sell and move on. And therefore, things happen very quickly in public markets. In private markets where there are no clear standards for disclosure, there's a lot of information is not revealed. And also it's very it's illiquid. Therefore, for investors also, even if there is a problem, I hope I'm not taking your points away, Vivek. I hope I'm not taking your points away from your talk. No, but you know, I feel that maybe I'm just jumping the gun for you. Sorry. And then of course, in the rush to make deals, you know, due diligence often is not as strong as it should be. And then of course, you know, the fact that you want to build long-term companies is, is not as, so there are challenges that we're seeing. And, you know, and I think we, we continue to see them. I didn't want to take names, but we have seen, you know, all kinds of companies that have had blown up for some reason or other and had a huge value destruction and many people have suffered from that and therefore it is a genuine challenge and it's a challenge because that actually brings down the reputation and value of the whole ecosystem so even if there are a few bad apples uh, you know everybody gets affected by that and therefore it's very important for the larger ecosystem that we make sure that companies have very high standards of governance of course, there are many steps taken uh, in India, the startup thing, the mark. But, you know, finally, corporate governance is not about some mandate by the government. It's about your internal beliefs and values. That's what is going to drive this. Because corporate governance is done when there's nobody watching. And therefore, it has to be driven by your own value system. But I think it can set benchmarks in corporate behavior. I think... Uh, when we started, we had a very clear idea that we wanted to set the standards for entrepreneurship. We want to show Indians that first generation Indians can become entrepreneurs. We want to share our wealth with our employees and we have created hundreds of millionaires, build brand equity for the company and for the country and so on and so forth. So we actually defined that our purpose was not just uh, running a business, but also setting values for, uh, for the country and the world to see. So to end, I want to say that governance is not just some legal stuff. Governance is not some mandatory stuff. Governance is actually a source 
of strategic advantage. Because when a company has good governance, it has a sense of purpose, it's able to attract great employees. If it has, has good governance, it has customers who believe that they're giving products and services that are valued. If it has good governance, investors can trust that the money is safe. So there are really huge benefits of, of doing this well. And I think we must do that. And I think as, as Indian companies, as Indian startups, these 100,000 startups, many of them are going to become very large companies. Many of them are in this room. They're going to become public companies. I think just as you focus on business goals, now, I mean, one of the impact of the last couple of years, you're focusing on financial performance, which is a good thing. You know, we're worrying about, you know, uh, free cash flow and all that good stuff, uh, profits and so on. But beyond that, we also have to look at governance as, as a very important thing, because that's going to define the future. And it's very important that the crop of companies that come into the public markets demonstrate uh, the kind of governance, because every one bad apple in that will affect the uh, next guy who wants to do a listing because of the reputation it creates. So my request is treat this as a very important strategic thing and set standards that we can all be proud of. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.